The KX5600 has established itself as the gold standard for snake and reptile scanning. Cost effective enough to be suitable for the job, it also provides really high resolution imaging. There are cheaper options available of course, but the lower resolution of those images means that finding follicles can be a lot more difficult and performing measurements a lot less accurate. In addition, for the sake of saving a few hundred dollars or a few hundred pounds, you have no support, nobody to go back to. You might be lucky, you might have a great machine that performs very well, but equally just as many people are desperately unlucky and within two or three months their machine is broken and they have nobody to go back to. It's for these reasons that the KX5600 is so popular in this market. The other things that make this machine so great is it's pretty much just plug in and go. There's really not much you have to do to optimise your image. There are three things you can do and we're going to go over these now. You can change your frequency, you can change your depth and you can adjust your gain. When you first power on your ultrasound machine, the display is going to look something like this. For almost all snake and reptiles, the depth is going to be too great. So make sure the first thing you do before you start scanning, adjust the depth, which is the function knob on the right. Turn it clockwise. And for most snakes, I would reduce it as much as you possibly can. These little markers on the side are centimeters, so you can see when I go back out, they appear to get smaller. And now they appear to get bigger. So this depth is now only one, two, three, four and a half centimeters, which is about right. You probably will not want any more than that. When you've got an image that you like with your linear probe, making sure when you first start, you remove this tape from the front of the head then you can press freeze, which is the snowflake button. Or if you have a foot switch, you would press it with your foot and you will see a snowflake icon on here to show you that the image is frozen. To perform a measurement, press measure. And you can select distance if you want to, but you don't need to. It will automatically assume that's what you want to do. So move your crosshair over onto the structure you want to measure press set and then go to the other side of the structure that you're measuring and press set again. It will give you the measurement here on the right and you can perform multiple measurements on one image. Other functions that may be useful for you when scanning snakes and reptiles. Frequency the button just here under these sliders. If you press it, it will adjust your frequency. If you were scanning a very, very large snake, you would want to scan at a low frequency. But for smaller snakes and reptiles, ball pythons for example, you could probably afford to scan at the highest frequency. Higher frequencies give you better resolution imaging, so it could make your measurements more accurate lower frequencies give you better penetration. So if you are scanning a really huge reptile or snake, that's when you would want to reduce your frequency to get better penetration. Keep an eye on these. These are your time gain compensation sliders. They're basically your brightness on your screen at different depths. So this is your overall gain here on the left. You see if I reduce that, the image gets darker. Bring it up, the image gets brighter. But these sliders will do that at different depths. So if I bring the ones at the top down, it's going to reduce the gain at the top of my image. Bring it up, it's going to make the top of my image brighter. Almost always, you're just going to want these in the center. The only reason I'm mentioning them is they can get knocked a little bit during transit or if you were to reach over at some point and brush your hand over them, you might move them and not realise what they are and where they should be. So I would say for most of the time you're going to want it in the centre. The only time you might adjust that is as you start to get more confident in your scanning. If you found that one part of your image was darker than the rest, you might want to boost up that gain in that particular region. But if you're first starting out, just keep them in the middle. 
The final thing I would mention for snake or reptile scanning, if you want to put the names of your animals in, you've got a patient button here. If you press that, that's where you can put the name of the snake in there. Um, if you are scanning for any friends, you can put the owner's name as well. Aside from that, there's not much else you need to know with snake and reptile scanning. This machine pretty much is plug in and start scanning. It's a very simple machine to use. I really hope this video has been useful to you if you have one of these machines. If you don't yet have one and you're thinking about getting one, please do speak to us first as we would love to work with you. We work with snake and reptile breeders all over the world and it's a real passion of ours. You can visit us at scanxultrasound.com if you're in the US or Canada and you'd like pricing in US dollars or portableultrasoundmachines.co.uk for pricing in British pounds. Either way, if you've got any questions or you're confused over pricing or currency, please just get in touch. We're always here to help.